who's the last keynote speaker today before we have our concluding panel. Um, Nils and I met for the first time uh, around the, again, the beginning of these things where there was known as the dot-com times. Nils was a journalist who was making a transition into online media. Um, and I was a consultant trying to do the same thing. Uh, but the genesis of his appearance here today was really, um, Nils uh, is a um, member of the Norwegian Olympic um, organization. He's the chief digital officer of uh, sports in Norway, essentially the Norwegian Sports Federation, as well as the Norwegian Olympic and Paralympic committees. And um, he was uh, covering uh, the Olympics um, from uh, Pyeongchang this year uh, on his Facebook. And that backstage coverage that came out of, of, of Nils's, uh, I guess, habits as a journalist was the best coverage that I saw. Because uh, it had a lot of these stories about what went on behind the stage at the Olympics. Um, and a lot of it was about what are the particular practices of a successful team that allows them to win 39 medals in, in the Winter Olympics. Um, so I, I was very inspired by that and, and uh, asked Nils Khan if he could come over here and share uh, a little bit more about that and, and his other experiences in the Confederation of Sports. Uh, so I'm super excited to introduce to you uh, Nils right now. Nils, please, welcome. Thank you. So it will be a big change from electric ferries to electric planes. And then uh, probably uh, electric uh, sports people. So um, in Norway, we are usually saying that we are pioneers, and um, we are pioneers uh, that built this nation, this little nation. And uh, when we talk about pioneers in uh, 2018, there is definitely some results from the last Winter Olympics that uh, the Swiss doesn't like. <laughs> But we were quite impressed about their uh, sixth place, actually, on the medal. <laughs> so congratulations, all the Swedes here. Um, actually, Norway took 39 medals and 14 gold medals. That is uh, a record for any nation in a Winter Olympic. So, uh, uh, and I'm happy also to introduce one of the board members of the Norwegian Olympic Committee, Jorod Asper, that is here, is coming up to the stage later on. Um, well, Norway, uh, 39 medals, 14 gold medals, uh, the best nation ever. That was some kind of an achievement. Maybe not a coincidence, because uh, actually, the three most winning medalists in any Olympics and gold medalists are Norwegians. So the lady here to the right, she has eight gold medals, she is 37, she took three gold medals in this year's Olympics. So there is no coincidence that the top three uh, are from Norway when it comes to Winter Olympics. And maybe it's not a coincidence either that we are good in winter sports because we basically built our nation's identity on what we have achieved on skis. We have the legendary stories back to the 1200 and we are also having Nansen and Amundsen and their achievements on ski. Uh, that was the middle of a period where Norway got independency. Uh, I should mention Sweden once more, I think. <laughs> so, um, uh, then what we are saying today is actually that we are still pioneering. Because uh, we want to make a point that we have done that in the past. We do it now in 2018 and we have plans to do it in the future as well. And uh, doing that we also want to do it with the older generations and with sustainability and with Olympic performances. And some of you have probably heard that this is the way we are born. Uh, and uh, and um, I think it's uh, some kind of a truth. Um, there is a lifelong relationship between Norwegians and doing winter sports. 
And uh, for our kids, it's important that we, uh, we we are very focused on that to have them get out in the winter, do some activities, have fun, and uh, get uh, used to be out there. And probably the best skier ever uh, is saying it like this. For me, skiing in Norway is much more the slopes and turns. I was around three when I had my first day of skiing. I don't remember the exact moment, but I remember the feeling. Waking up at sunrise, full of expectations. Skiing all day without taking a single break. Ski resource with strong skiing culture. A place to share interests, experiences, and the joy of skiing. At some point, it gets deeper. You have to believe in yourself. You're nervous, but you'll do it anyway. Take it a step further. Get better. You experience places you didn't know existed. The atmosphere, the sound, the people. The feeling of skiing straight into the ocean. The skiing isn't only about being the fastest or the best. It's about being out there. The tracks you make, the peaks you climb, the nature, the lights, and the fresh air. It's a real eye-opener, traveling around the world, coming back home, and realizing there's nothing quite like Norway. something that simply has to be expressed. So, um, what did he really say? There is one very important thing when it comes to sports in Norway. And I think we can add Sweden in this actually. Um, you have been talking a lot about purpose-driven uh, activities today, uh, to do innovation. And there is one purpose with Norwegian sports, and that is joy, to have fun. This is extremely important, and I think it's a very different from what we can see in different in, in all the nations, uh, and I think it is different from US. And that is that uh, our vision is that every kid that is entering into the winter activities is it at one year, two year, or three years old. It needs to be fun. Uh, what's in it for the kid? What's in it for the kids? It's not about what it's in it for, for the parents or the coaches or trainers or whatever. It's about the kids. And they have to have joy. And they have to manage. They have to feel that they manage. That is extremely important for Norwegian sports. Because we're only 5 million people. We need all of them to be active. Actually, last year, 93% of all kids and teenagers in Norway have been member of a sports club. So they have joy. They, they enjoy themselves. And they manage. They feel that they manage. So that's the reason why we can keep them until they are teenagers, like Svindal was saying, that at some time, at some age, they are, they are taking up more um, ambitions. And there's another unique thing about Norwegian sports. In Sweden they have four organizations about sports. In Norway we have one. It's uh, the Confederation of Sports, the Olympic Committee, the Paralympic Committee, and the Special Olympics are in one organization. In Sweden it's four, in all other countries it's four. So we say that here in Norway, for sports, the mission is that everyone is alike. If you go to the center of Olympic sports in Norway, 
where all these uh, gold winner medalists were uh, are doing the, a lot of the training. They train together with Paralympic winners. It's all together in one center, which is also unique in Norway. Um, then we come, that we come to a point where we can talk about our values. So our values is really something we try to follow in every aspect of what we are doing. And I think that is also uh, pointing at the purpose of what we are doing. So, uh, and, and it's also a, a very important thing to say that we are democratic. We are a movement. We are member owned. We are not owned by others. And, and this is also uh, some kind of uniqueness about, I think, also Swedish and Norwegian sports, that we are organized in and through, we are not organized through schools, like we probably are in the US. We are not state run. Uh, not to govern by the state. 90% uh, of our income is created inside the organization by volunteers. 90%. So when we talk about those 39, million, 39 medals, 14 gold medals this year, most of the money that is put into this is sponsorships and the money that is created inside the organization itself. Uh, so the volunteer engagement is also unique for Sweden and Norway, I think, more than in other countries. I think Finland is also in the same direction. Denmark, not so much. It's more companies running the sports in Denmark. So this means that most people that are helping out, bringing kids out, so they have fun, so they manage, uh, they are volunteers. And we try to keep up our sports for the whole, uh, for lifelong period. Uh, it's, it's important that the volunteering and, and the, the engagement of, of doing sports yourself is still there throughout. Um, this skiing culture is what is the basement and being out in the winter is the basement of the success. Um, we are, we are still pioneering to create these medals. And I'm going to, to touch on that a little bit more deep. We have some values inside the team. Uh, it's honesty, health, community, love of sport. Again, I said we, are four, we, have, we have one organization for all sports in Norway. And the joy, the enjoyment and the love of sports is our drive. Is it gold medalists or is it the kids? That is extremely important. Another thing is the team, the community feeling, that we are not alone doing things. And, and one of the most best examples from the last uh, Olympic was what happened in one of the distances for cross-country skiing. These two guys, the young one with the gold medal, is only 23 years old. Uh, the other one on his left that got the silver, he is 32. He has been, this old one, he has been winning all kind of competitions for the last 10 years, but he has never got a gold medal individually in any competitions. And on this day uh, in the Olympics this winter, he really had the chance to win it. Uh, and the young one, he actually fall down on 200 meters from the start. So there was no one thinking of him that he could win this gold medal. It was chaos. And what happened was that he was slowly coming behind. And when it was three kilometers left, he was only two meters behind the old guy that now, at last, he could win his gold medal. But then, the day before, the evening before, the team had decided that if someone two, three kilometers away from the goal, from finish, is going to try to get rid of the rest of the skiers, the other Norwegians are not going to follow. They are more focused on keeping the Swedes and the others behind. <laughs> 
So think about it. This 23-year-old, he has not won anything. And the 33-year-old, he had his chance now. But three kilometers from the finish, the young one went. And the old one was thinking like, you know, he has said it afterwards. He was thinking for one minute, what should I do, what should I do? Well, we decided, the team decided, that we are not going to follow if one of us is trying three kilometers, four kilometers, five minutes kilometers from the finish line. So he didn't go. He didn't go. And you can see here the result. The young one is congratulating the old one with the silver. The old one knows that he could win this, definitely, because he was only a few meters behind him in, in the finish line. And you can see that the winner takes it all. Because when the, old, the young one is interviewed by the press, the old one is leaving. Uh, and he knows that this is probably his last chance to win any gold medal. But the team decided how to do this. So when the young one went, he waited. And he was not able to take advantage of it one kilometer from, goal, from the finish line. He was close, but he couldn't make it. So this shows a little bit of the team spirit. Uh, we have mentioned Svindal before. I can promise you that as a captain of the Alpine team, and he took the gold medal in, uh, in uh, downhill this winter, and his best friend took the silver medal. Um, they, uh, but Svindal is the captain. And for the last six, seven years, he has been the captain. If someone in the team is coming one minute late for breakfast, he's telling them, please leave. You're too late. That's the discipline. Because these gears, they, they have so big expectations to the coaches, to the ski um, vaccine team, to everyone around them. So they can't let anything uh, else destroy the discipline. So if some skiers are late or are doing something that they have not agreed, it's it's huge. Uh, it's a huge, uh, uh, huge thing. And he is very hard on this, and everyone follows it. So this is a kind of, of discipline that they are working on. Um, the vision of the Olympic team is basically uh, to be the best to lead and to train. Leadership is extremely important, has become more and more important in top sports. Uh, and and um, uh, it's, we have uh, uh, three or four coaches with us uh, that are coaching the trainers, coaching the leadership of the teams every day. They are uh, asking themselves, what could we do better today? What could we do better the last hour? When the team came back uh, with 39 medals, all the coaches had to go to a seminar when they landed in Norway, not two days afterwards, but exactly when they landed, because they wanted two days to uh, uh, recap and examine what could we do better last, next time. So it's an it's a, it's a important thing that how to lead. And it's very democratic. Uh, we have men you have mentioned that earlier today that in the Nordic countries maybe you are more, you have a more um, a flat organization. It's possible for everyone to have opinions, uh, and this is also the case for this that all the athletes can have opinions about their coaches. But when the decision is taken, then everyone has to follow. There is no discussion afterwards. But when they evaluate the whole thing, which they do every year, um, they, have, they can say whatever they, they want to say. So, um, there is a huge uh, discipline to work together for the big occasions, the big competitions, uh, which maybe Norway has been uh, the best nation to do over the last years. Uh, better than the Nord all the Nordic uh, countries and better than most. Maybe UK, when it comes to Summer Olympics, is at the same level now. After they got so much resources 
for the 2012 London Olympics. So, um, so if you go to basic philosophy, learning from the best athletes, this means that we have a team of coaches that are going worldwide to find out what they do. If, if someone is doing very well in any sport, we go there and ask. And it's also like this that we have brought two coaches from other countries, skating for example, that we took two gold medals and two silver medals this year. We went to Canada for Waterspoon to be our coach because he was better than the Norwegian coaches. So we bring in also coaches from other countries. But then we are also um, doing something that most other countries are not doing. And that is to have cross sports experiences. So we learn from each other. So the coaches are cross having cross examinations of what did he do, what kind of uh, technology do we use for this and that, and so on and so on. Um, and then we have something we call 24 hours athlete, and that is back to the discipline, what they eat, what they don't eat, uh, how they interact with each other. Uh, we are very, very clear on that they should study, not only doing sports, so they have other uh, things coming into them than, than only doing the best possible uh, performances. So it's the quality of the training. So this is really, I, I think when I have been working in business, I think this is something that we all can learn a lot from when it comes to how they are focusing on their daily training, their daily um, focus on being better, every day, and asking questions. The best athletes always ask the best questions. And then we have the, the, um, the um, uh, relationships between the teams and inside the teams that I have mentioned. Uh, and it's also about how you execute the, co the, the, the competitions. So what we are actually saying is that we are pioneering still in all aspects of what we are doing. When it comes to the culture, we really have to work on the culture. The culture is there now, but still we are working on how to do it better. And what are the expectations next Olympics? And by June, 1st of June, we will have a document saying what we expect will happen over the next four years, how we will have to perform better for the next four years to be, in, be able to reach uh, a better results next time. And it's value driven. Uh, it's also important to, again to say it's joy for all. I manage what's in it for the kids. This is something which is getting more and more complicated because of uh, the, the digital uh, world that we are living in and all the interest that the young people will have to do other things, to be entertained. Uh, so this is not something which is constant, uh, we need to, to develop it. So this is also a pioneering work. Uh, and that is the reason why eSport is going to be very important for us going forward. Because uh, the youngs doing eSport are able to, they, are, they want to compete and uh, as long as they want to compete they can have fun in doing also more active competitions. Back to best, best leadership, best in training um, and also the team spirit, the cross sport learning. This is also about pioneering because we use coaches to coach our coaches. So there is a huge uh, part of the, of the success is the evaluation that we do almost daily during, or not almost during, daily during an Olympic period. For the last two Olympic Games, Winter Games, in Sochi four years ago and this year, we started off not so very good. So we have, the team really worked hard over the first two days to get hold of what are we doing wrong, what, what is it uh, that we can change to be better during the Olympics. So that's what I wanted to say.
So I hope I hope uh, I hope I hear um, what are questions for Nils. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> Nils, thank you very much. Uh, I've got actually a two-part question. The first is uh, I'd like to know hear a little bit more about the relationship between esports and the engagement of kids in real sports. Are there any metrics along those lines? And secondly, you mentioned two or three times uh, what, what we have here, I manage. You, you say it's, it's critical that, that the kids can manage. I'm not quite clear on what you mean by that. Can you elaborate on that? Thank you. Yeah, start with the last one. Um, it's about, if, if, I mean, if you go in a, a Norwegian kindergarten, you have to uh, go out and, and do winter activities when they are two, three years old. And if you have uh, people in the kindergarten that are putting a lot of pressure on the kids to do this and that, uh, it's not good. You have to have fun. You have to feel uh, that you are together with the others and having fun. So that they manage. So when they try skiing first time, you need to have very patient people around you and, 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 and every kid should feel that I am managing this. I'm enjoying this. I want to do it again. I have fun with my friends. So this is also the reason why we have rules in Norway that you are not, a, you are not allowed to have kids competing uh, like you are in the US before you are 13 years old. So for a soccer team, if there are 20 youngs playing in the same team, all 20 is playing in the same playing time. So we are not creating this kind of elite sports people uh, in the young age. Of course, uh, there are 12 years olds that want to play soccer all day long, but then they do that, but not organized. So have fun, get out. There's nothing like bad weather, it's only good clothing. Uh, and have fun, very important. And also in the Olympic team, it's about to have fun. So there is all, always a clone in the team. Not, not physically clone, but some people that are able to, to make it funny and, and to see some, you know, and, and say some nice things and have people relaxed. So, uh, to your first question about esports, uh, it is as easy as if uh, you have a kid that are doing a lot of esports, gaming, and so on. If we organize that inside the sports federation, we are able to get in touch with them because then they are a member, and we can start to interact with the member, and we can uh, we can try to find out why is this kid not doing uh, more activities. Why is he or her uh, not joining the, the, the skiing or the football, the soccer or whatever? Uh, that is one thing. And the other thing is that we have tried to define sport. And it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's very difficult. Is bowling sport? Is playing cards sport? Uh, what about chess? We have said that chess is probably sports because you use your brain and you do some some active things to play it. So is it then sport or is it not sport? Is e-sport sport or not sport? But you, you have to calculate, you have to you know to, to investigate what do I do next and so on. So you use your brain. So we say that probably we are in the middle of the discussion on this, but we probably will say that as long as you do things like that, you are doing sports because it's not only physical. And it, it shows also that for mental health, health it's, more, uh, it's as important to think that broad about sports than only the physical sports. But you need to do some activity. I'm Peter Linder, I've got a question. Uh, I grew up skiing in Hestra in Sweden, and I noticed that a lot of the Norwegian skiers have uh, Hestra gloves. Could you elaborate a little bit on the performance? <laughs> the role of the performance of Norwegian skiers tied to Swedish gloves. I don't want to speak more about Sweden. <laughs> uh, 
But you are playing in the Soccer World Cup this summer, so um, I think uh, it will be a uh, rebound to me about this, I think. <laughs> Some more questions? Okay, Nils, thank you very much for coming over, for sharing your observations on how to win 39 medals uh, without really trying. <laughs> thank you. Perhaps I will. Yeah. Thank you very much.